those who wouldn't be able to attend, we will um, share a copy of the recording and the presentation uh, after this. So without further ado, uh, I'll pass it on to Fazana and Muzakir. Um, there you go. And thank you very much uh, for your attention. Hello, good afternoon. Um, thank you, thank you, Karen, for the very kind introduction. And then thank you, Institute of Factories, uh, Institute and Faculty of Factories, for inviting me and Muzakir to present. Uh, we're we all uh, I'm personally very passionate about, about Takaful. It's something I've been doing for 15 years. Um, and um, you know, always very excited to, to talk about Takaful and, and spreading the knowledge on Takaful. So today our topic is, is really um, um, a, a basic introduction to Takafu, uh, really targeting to, you know, my understanding is the actual science students in, in Southeast Asia. We understand we've got uh, 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 attendees from, you know, a number of countries, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia. So um, I, I'm, the, the intention is to talk about Takafu in, in general, but I'll touch a bit on, you know, some of maybe some market-centric um, uh, issues as well during during this discussion. Uh, so if we can move on to the next slide. So the intention is for myself and Muzakir to speak to you about Takaful maybe in the next sort of 30, 40 minutes. Uh, my, myself and Muzakir will be interchangeably presenting. So hopefully that will keep things um, interesting. Uh, if you do have questions, you know, feel free to just pop it in the in the chat box and, you know, we will try to address it at the end. Um, and um, what we'd like to do to kick off is uh, to do a, a very simple quiz. Uh, very, very simple. I promise you, very, very simple. I'll take you, it'll take you, you know, less than a minute. Um, and if we can start with that quiz first, um, and then we'll to kick off. So with this four questions, very simple questions. So first one is really, uh, you know, Takaful is a form of, you know, Shara compliant insurance. Is that true or false? Um, uh, is Takaful only for Muslims? Uh, true or false? Uh, in terms of growth rate, uh, you know, has the Takaful industry growth, especially the, the life, the family Takaful industry compared to conventional life insurance, um, has it been growing faster? Uh, true or false? And I think that's also a last question, if we could scroll down. Not sure whether we could scroll down, but there's a, a fourth yeah. question yeah. that says, um, as a consumer yourself, um, you know, would you, do you have a preference to purchase Takaful or, or conventional insurance or, or, or you don't care? <laughs> um, so that's, that's really the four, four very, very simple questions, hopefully. So we'll, we'll give you a few few minutes to to answer that. So while waiting for for people to um, answer those polls, um, just maybe a, a quick overview of the agenda. Um, I think we'll start off with the basic of you know what is Takaful. Uh, we'll do a, a, a brief comparison of conventional insurance and, and Takaful. We'll talk about products, you know, how, how does Takaful differ um, to conventional business? Um, what are the role of actuaries in, in Takaful? Uh, what are the challenges and opportunities in the Takaful industry, career opportunities? And we'll wrap up with a number of case studies uh, that you know might give you some interesting insights on you know some of the evolution of of Takafu and also um, uh, I guess the challenges that 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 the industry is is facing. Um, given that we have um, uh, attendees from Indonesia, I recognize that in Indonesia it's called Sharia insurance. Uh, it's not called Takaful, so I think the different markets sometimes call it differently. Um, but it, globally, I think it's, it's it's more more commonly referred to as Takaful. But I appreciate in Indonesia it's Sharia interest. But but we are we're essentially talking the same thing, uh, just for clarification. 
Okay, um, I think that should give everyone enough time for the poll. Okay, great. So let's start off with the first one. So firstly, looks like um, majority of you agree. It is a, a form of Shara compliant insurance. Um, that, that is really, really what, what it is. Um, Takaful is for Muslim only. Um, yeah, this is really quite a common uh, misconception. Uh, I mean, it, it. in fact, there's actually a large number of non-Muslims who actually purchase Takaful uh, and non-Muslims find it attractive as well. Uh, and it could be because of product designs, could be because of, um, uh, you know, it, it's investing in ethical investments. Um, so, so there are features in Takaful that, that makes it attractive also for non-Muslims. Um, the third question on growth. Uh, so we've talked about family takaful industry. So just to clarify, myself and Muzakir, we work in the family takaful and life insurance industry. So, so that's really uh, our area of specialty. So that, that's why the question question relates to that. Um, but but yes, I mean, the, the, the point number three is that yes, the growth for the takaful industry um, has been higher than conventional, um, um, you know, in, in sort of the last last decade and it's, it's still the, it's still the same in terms of it doesn't look like slowing down yet so if we go to the last question i'm quite interested in the last question actually can we scroll down to question four is that possible i think you can scroll down your screen Razana. can you scroll ah, down your okay screen? Right, okay. So the fourth question is, um, as a consumer, do you prefer to buy Takaful conventional or I don't care? So, um, I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's interesting. So over half prefers to buy Takaful. Um, some prefers to buy conventional insurance. I, I think be, uh, be be good to understand why. And there's you know, also about 29% who say they don't care, just as long as that's the cheapest. Um, so if I, if I just maybe move ahead, to the next slide, uh, which sort of uh, captures that discussion. So I think we, we've talked, um, so these are really the, the, the answers. Um, the, the fourth point I wanted to flag up, uh, you know, ultimately it is a personal preference. It does vary market by market. Um, there's some markets who um, consumers are actually willing to pay more just to purchase Takafu, uh, just for the fact that it is a Shara compliant product. Um, and there's some markets where, you know, it's not really a major consideration. It is a consideration, but not a major consideration that, um, you know, they, they just purchase whatever that's cheapest. So, you know, this does vary by market. Okay, so let's move on to the, to the next slide. So I, th I think that, that's a, a good start. Um, uh, looking at the global market, um, I think to highlight that uh, this slide is just sort of flagging the, the major markets. It's not, it's not exhaustive, um, but you know, market size globally is about USD 24 billion in, in 2019. Um, so if we sort of focus on, on say the Middle East, that's actually the largest market, but they tend to be predominantly on general takaful business. Uh, however, in, in Southeast Asia, it tends to be more family takaful. So Malaysia actually has the largest family takaful market globally. Uh, in terms of market split between general and family, so general is roughly about 80% and family takaful is roughly about 20%. So, so general is still, still a bigger chunk uh, of the market. Uh, but, but yeah, what we still see is, you know, growth rate is still, you know, uh, higher than conventional. Um, and one thing to flag up as well is, is Africa, uh, because I know we, I talked about uh, Asia and, and, and the Middle East. Uh, I mean, we do recognize, I think Takafu really started in, in Africa, um, but uh, it, it is a growing market, but it is it's growing um, a bit more slowly over there compared to other markets. So if I move on to the next slide, please. Okay, so the I think just going back to the the, the real basics, you know, what, what is Takafo? Um, it it is really um, yeah, we say it's a Shara compliant insurance. I mean, really the whole concept 
it's um, it came from a concept called kafala, which is really guaranteeing each other. So it is a mutual and cooperative concept. It is a, a pooling concept. So really, um, in Takafu, we, the policyholder is called a participant. So you you are you, you know you are a member of this common pool. So as 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 a participant, you you donate to this common pool, uh, which gives you you know a protection essentially. Um, you know, the, the whole um, sort of operations of Takaful is compliant with, you know, Islamic principles. So this is sort of end to end you know, in terms of the product features, in terms of investments. Um, I mean, that, that's that's really the, the, the spirit of, of Takaful. Um, the other key feature as well is um, the role of the Takaful operator and the participant or the policy holders. So the Takafu, Takafu operator, their role is just to manage the fund. That, that is all their role is. Whereas the participant who are the, you know, the group of members who contribute money to this, to this risk pool, they actually are um, owners of that Takafu fund. I'll explain a bit more detail, you know, comparing conventional and, and, and Takafu uh, uh, in the next sort of few slides. But before that, if we can move on to the next slide, um, it is you know the, the 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 key question is to to understand why you know why is there a view that conventional insurance is is not Sharia compliant? So maybe just you know firstly to put the caveat uh, myself and Muzakir, you know we're not we're not Sharia scholars, so we're not obviously experts in interpreting um, uh, Sharia. Uh, rules and, and all that but you know these are sort of um, a high level just to share with you uh, what are the typical concerns usually with uh, conventional insurance from uh, an Islamic perspective. So firstly in a conventional insurance this is really this three key elements really um, that is not um, Sharia compliant. So firstly in terms of the first thing is, is uncertainty so or they call it in Arabic terms garar so this is when um, you know, when, when a claim is made, so when a claim is, is not made, then what happened is that the insurer then makes all the profits and, and the other person at the other party doesn't get anything. So that, that's, that's uncertainty in those sort of contract arrangements. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the element of, of gambling. Um, uh, this is interrelated to the uncertainty. So the gambling element is really where there is, you know, the idea that you pay a small amount of money, you know, a small premium, and then um, with the hope that you actually get a big lump sum um, at the end by a, say, a, a large sum assured. And the third item is, is really on in terms of investments, you know, in, interest is, is one element. So, you know, we, we know riba is, is not accepted under Islamic principles, uh, riba, which is, which is interest. So insurance companies typically do invest in interest bearing instruments. Uh, and that, you know, so therefore interest is something that we, uh, uh, under Islamic principles, it's not acceptable. So yeah, these are the three, which is the gara, maizir and, and, and riba in, in Arabic terms, uh, also in English terms, uncertainty, gambling and interest. So if I move on to the next slide where we compare, um, you know, how does this element work in conventional versus takaful? So in conventional, what happens is that there is actually a risk transfer. Yeah, there's, so a policyholder pays a premium to the insurer um, and in exchange for a risk transfer. Yeah, but in takaful, there is no risk transfer. In takaful, it's a sharing of risk uh, in that pool fund among members or, or participants and the operators just managing that fund. Then we've got this uncertainty. We already mentioned, you know, how in conventional insurance is it's really unclear as to when losses will occur and, and, and you know, how much will, will someone get compensated. The difference is that in Takaful, you know, it's clear that it's, it's a contribution and the contribution to the risk pool is in a form of donation. Um, and then it's, it provides a mutual protection to everyone in, in that pool. Um, the third item on gambling, you know, in, in conventional insurance, um, if there's an insured event, then insurer pays, you know, the, the sum assured, even though it, the, 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 the amount is much, much larger than the premium paid. Whereas in Takaful, again, it's, it's back on the spirit of, of mutuality, um, given the donation concept 
or the Tabaru concept. Uh, and then we talked about investment. So investment, we already talked about, about the interest-bearing instruments. And I think it's, it's beyond that. It's not only interest-bearing. It's also on um, uh, other assets. Uh, for example, you know, um, in Islamic principles, um, you, know, you know, investing in things relating to alcohol uh, is deemed not Sharia compliant. So for a conventional insurer, that's not, you know, something that they will have in their investment policy. Uh, but for Takaful, it will be very clear in the investment policy that, you know, they will only invest in, you know, you know um, assets that's uh, Sharia compliant. So they wouldn't buy stocks uh, or shares of companies uh, selling alcohol, for example. Okay, moving on to the next slide. So I think for the next few slides, we'll talk about um, really how uh, conventional models versus takaful models just really understanding the movement of you know premiums and contributions um in in a company so Muzakir, over to you okay thanks fazana okay so um um in a conventional company the structure or, or the business model um is different compared to a takaful so before we move on to the models that um takaful uh, how, how the Takafo company operates. Um, in a conventional company, uh, the insurance model is as per uh, the diagram. So when the policyholders pay the premium, uh, pay premiums to an insurance company, the premium is then allocated to the, an insurance fund. And then uh, the insurer will use the insurance fund to pay for any claims and expenses that is borne by the company. Uh, the claims could be, uh, uh, for example, death claims or any other benefits, surrender benefits, maturity benefits, uh, bonuses, and etc. cetera. Uh, and then the expenses that is paid by the insurance fund could also include all the operational expenses, uh, commissions, um, uh, salaries of, of, of the, the workers, and etc. And then um, after deducting all the claims and, and expenses, if there is any profit, this profit would be um, would be transferred to the shareholders fund, and it belongs to one hundred percent belongs to the shareholder. So that is essentially the 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 overall or high level business model of how a conventional uh, company uh, conventional conventional insurance company works. Okay. Um, in contrast to a takafo. Um, in Takaful, there is actually more than one business model or more Takaful operational model. Uh, in this presentation, we will provide you with, with a few. And, and in this slide right now is that um, it's a pure, uh, this is a pure Mudarabah model. Okay, uh, this is one of the uh, many Takaful models that exist. And uh, for a company, they can choose to use whichever Takaful model that is available. Um, uh, they, they are not restricted to, for example, um, in one product, product A, to use Mudarabah model and then product B to also use uh, Mudarabah model. No, uh, they can choose uh, to use another uh, Takafu model, for example, uh, a Wakala model for, for another product uh, uh, in the company. So um, for the pure Mudarabah model, um, the participants or the policyholders will pay contributions um, to, to the Takafu company and 100% of the money will go into the risk fund. Okay, so uh, when the risk fund receives the money, uh, the, the money is received as a tabaru or donation in the risk uh, and the, uh, as a donation. Uh, and then the money that is pulled from the donation in the risk fund will be used to pay any claims that is payable uh, under the contract. So, for example, if there is a simple uh, uh, family term, uh, takafu, um, if there is any death uh, from the participants of the risk fund, the risk fund will pay the sum assured um, to the policyholder, to the participants. So, and at the end of the day, um, after deducting all of the claims, um, and if, the con if there is still money left in the risk fund, uh, this will be uh, regarded as surplus. So meaning that if, if the contributions that, that the income that the risk fund received from the contributions and investment is more than the claims, then there, there will be some surplus. And these surplus will then be shared 
with the shareholder and the participants. Okay. Okay. How much does the shareholder receive, and uh, how much does the participant receive depends on the contract um, between the company, between the Takafu operator and the participants. Um, there could be very, very different ranges of, of um, percentage uh, sharing of the surplus, and it depends on the product and depends on the contract as well. So um, in the case of Pure Mudaraba, uh, the expenses that is uh, compared to a conventional company, uh, in the conventional structure, the expenses is borne by the insurance fund. But in this case, uh, for Takafu, there is a clear segregation of fund where the shareholder fund is uh, responsible for all the expenses and the risk fund is only responsible for the claims. So um, the shareholder cannot use the money from the risk fund to pay for the expenses and they, can, and they need to pay all the expenses out of their own pocket. So meaning for a pure Mudarabah model, uh, the income that they receive is only from the surplus sharing or the profits that the risk fund made. And they will use this uh, income in order to pay uh, any expenses that they incur. Um, also, um, if, for example, if there was a, a very bad year or, or, or a claims or that is very big, um, it could happen that the claims that is payable from the risk fund is uh, more than the contribution that the risk fund received. So in that case, um, the risk fund would be in a deficit position, which means that they would not have enough money to pay all of the outstanding claims. So in this case, um, the Takafu company or the shareholder fund is uh, responsible to provide an interest-free loan to the risk fund. This interest-free loan is called CARD um, and it is provided as a loan, not a gift to the risk fund meaning that uh, the risk fund will use this loan in order to pay any of the outstanding claims. And if there is any profits uh, uh, from in the future years, the risk fund will need to pay back this loan to the shareholder fund. So that uh, is essentially um, a typical pure Modaraba model of, of a Takafu company. Another popular um, Takafu model structure is a pure Wakala model. So, the Wakala model is a uh, means uh, it is an agency model. Um, this means that the shareholder fund acts as an agent to the risk fund to manage uh, the risk fund. So under the Wakala model, when a participant pays a contribution, um, the shareholder, uh, the, the Takafu company will take an agency free upfront or Wakala fee. So meaning, uh, for example, they can take 30% of the contribution and what's ever left, which is 70% of the contribution, will be, uh, will be put into the risk fund as a Tabaru or donation. So, however, in, in the pure Wakala model, um, the shareholder fund is not, um, is not eligible for any of the profits or the surplus that arise in the risk fund. In our previous pure Mudarabah model, the surplus, um, the surplus from the risk fund is shared between the two, between shareholder and participants. However, for a pure Wakala model, they have received an agency fee or Wakala fee upfront, and therefore they are not eligible for any surplus that is uh, arising from the risk fund. Uh, so it means that 100% of the surplus uh, will be paid back, uh, will be received by the participants or policyholders. Um, regardless uh, the share of whichever Wakala model or pure Mudarabah model, the shareholder fund still has the responsibility to provide card in the event that the risk fund is in deficit. Okay. Another model that is uh, quite popular um, in recent years would be the hybrid Wakala, mod uh, hybrid Wakala and Mudarabah model. So, um, the hybrid Wakala and Mudar model is, as its name suggests, um, that basically that you, um, the Takafu model, uh, the Takafu company charges a Wakala fee and also participates in the surplus sharing, um, in the surplus that arise from the risk fund. Um, the whole money uh, cash flow is, is as similar as the previous models. However, uh, in this case, the shareholder receives a Wakala fee upfront as well as uh, receiving a surplus percentage 
from the risk fund. Uh, typically under the hybrid wakala mudarbah model, the surplus that is received from the shareholder fund, the percentage of surplus that is received would be lower compared to pure mudarbah model because they have already received a wakala fee. Uh, but however, uh, the idea behind this model is that if, um, if the shareholder fund is, um, is to receive uh, income from the risk fund, uh, it will incentivize or it will provide an incentive to the Takafu company for a better management of the fund because their income depends on the performance of the risk fund. So. Okay, uh, in this Takafu model, um, there is no participant account. There is another uh, Takafu model, uh, operational model, which is with participants account. Um, Overall, the, the, the concept of the hybrid wakala mudarabah with participant accounts is, is the same as the previous one, except for um, there is a participant account that is created uh, for the participants. A participant account is essentially a similar to like a bank savings account uh, in your name, uh, which is held by a Takafo company. So when, when a participant pays a contribution, um, after the company, after the Takafu company deducts a wakala fee, um, the money instead of being donated or straightway donated to the risk fund, it will be put in this savings account called the participant's account. And um, the participant account will act as an intermediary uh, between the contributions and the risk fund. So um, the risk fund will, will receive a tabaru from the participant's account. The tabaru that is received uh, could be less than uh, the, the amount that is inside the participant, participant's account. So, um, and then, uh, and the other, uh, the other movement or the other uh, obligations are the same. The risk fund will, be ob uh, will pay the claims payable. And if there is any surplus, it will be shared between the shareholders and the participant's account. Upon any claims, uh, uh, let's say, for example, a surrender or death, the participant accounts will also be paid out in uh, will also be paid out to the participants because essentially this participants account or the savings account uh, belongs to the participants and doesn't belong to the Takafu company. Yeah, so um, Muzaki, if you just stay on that slide for a while, um, just I guess to share, you know, that there are a number of models, as you can see, uh, maybe to share that different markets um, have preference for, for different model structures. Uh, certainly, I think in, in you know, countries like Malaysia and Indonesia, uh, the, the hybrid Wakala Mudaraba model is the, the more popular ones. Uh, but if you go to, I think, other markets, I think, for example, I think Middle East and, and Africa, um, they, they would prefer the pure wakala. So I think it all comes back to interpretation of um, the Sharia guidelines. Um, there are some views that Mudarabah may not really be fully Sharia compliant. So again, that, that comes through territories of, of discussion with Sharia scholars, uh, but certainly the interpretation in, 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 in Malaysia, Indonesia generally is, is acceptable to have this wakala Mudarabah. Um, I mean, yes, I think companies can choose whatever models they want, but it needs to get the approval of their Sharia board. So each Takafu company would have a layer of corporate governance, so a, 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 you know, a Sharia board member who would give opinion to say this is in line or acceptable um, in, in terms of Sharia compliance or not. So, so you know, ultimately that, that's the layer of, of governance in a Takafu company. Uh, you know, in terms of products or, or models or, or investments that will need to get their approval uh, in addition to a normal board approval. Okay, um, so if we move on to the next slide, I just wanted to share, you know, how, how has Takaful existed um, uh, in, in, you know, in, in various markets. So when I say standalone means uh, it's, it's, a, it's a company that only sells Takafu business or Sharia insurance business. Uh, a window is when there is a conventional insurance company and they are also selling uh, a Takafu product under the insurance license. So the, there's the, 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 the two um, formats that's, that's, that exist currently. So markets like 
uh, Malaysia, Brunei, um, for a company to sell Takafu, it needs to be a separate entity. So it cannot even be an entity with conventional insurance. It's, it's a completely standalone Takafu entity with its own um, capital requirements, its own board members, its own uh, divisions and departments. They will have their own finance team, uh, their own CEO, you know, uh, their own actual team, etc. Whereas in, in a window structure, it's, it's, um, it's just a division uh, or a product within there. So maybe if I, if, I, if I go on to the next slide, maybe that will help give you a better picture. So I uh, will start with a conventional insurance company. So, you know, the typical departments that you have in insurance company, you have your actuarial team, you have your risk team, you have your products team, um, you have your finance, uh, you have your claims underwriting, human resource, IT legal. So those are, you know, uh, pretty much sort of the, the, the key, key departments, typical key departments in insurance company. And then we move on to the middle column, the Takafu company. So this is why I say it's a standalone company. It will have its own um, capital. It will have its own um, uh, board members. So as you can see, the departments are actually the same. You have the actuarial, finance, claims. But at the bottom there, the orange box there is you have also a Sharia department. So there's also a Sharia department to make sure that, you know, the, the Sharia compliance uh, are observed. And on top of that is you also have a Sharia board uh, in addition to uh, a normal uh, board member for corporate governance. And then if I take you to the to the last column, this is an insurance company with Takafu window. So this is a, a um, something that exists in markets like Indonesia and Pakistan. Um, you have, again, the, the same departments. Um, but you also have a, a department, I guess, a Takaful or Sharia department. And, and these are not really only for Sharia compliance, but they are also the ones that's responsible to lead all, all the Takaful efforts, really, you know, uh, making sure they're meeting sales targets. So what they do is uh, they leverage on the existing departments in an insurance company to help them, uh, you know, design a product for Takaful, do the pricing. Um, so uh, essentially it, it is just it is just a product that's being sold in the insurance company. So Takaful is just a product um, leveraging on, on, on existing departments. So, I mean, usually uh, in most cases, um, all, you know, all these departments, actuarial, finance, their key focus will be conventional insurance. And then, you know, a small portion of their time will be on Takaful. Um, let's move on to the next topic. Okay. Um, so, um, for, um, uh, in a conventional company, um, and a Takapu company, there might be, uh, very similar products, for example, a term assurance and a family Takapu term. From a policyholder point of view, uh, uh, the term assurance product um, is, is very, very similar uh, between conventional and Takafo. Uh, the same, uh, both products provide a, de a specified death benefit within a fixed term. Uh, both uh, needs to pay a certain uh, amount of premium or contribution in order to provide the benefits, uh, the death benefits within the specified term. However, uh, there are maybe perhaps some certain differences between a Takafo product versus a conventional product. Uh, in this case, uh, for a term assurance, uh, typically in, in, in the term assurance market, there is no surrender value that is provided by, uh, by conventional companies. However, by ta uh, for Takafo companies, the family Takafo term product uh, can provide a surrender value. Um, and the surrender value amount is, is usually or uh, typically uh, decided or, or calculated beforehand and agreed beforehand uh, during the contract process uh, when the, when the policyholder or the participants uh, is buying the product. So um, also for a term assurance product, for a conventional company, there might be certain um, extra features such as the return on premium. Uh, return on premium uh, feature is essentially uh, like a cashback, for example, if you if you continue to pay premiums for, for example, five years, um, you will get a one year 
uh, worth of premium back to you. Uh, the comp the company will provide uh, a one year worth of premium back to you. So that feature um, can exist within a conventional company. However, for Takafo, uh, the concept of the return of premium uh, is 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 not permissible. Therefore, uh, these features um, are not available for a family Takafo term product. So for a conventional company, uh, there is no surplus that is shared between uh, the participants uh, and, and, the, and the insurer. But for Takafu company, if there is any surplus that is, uh, that is arise from the risk fund, if there is any profit that is made from the mutual uh, pooling of donations, then this surplus uh, will be paid to the participants, whether it's partially or freely, depending on the Takafu model. So, um, also for these kind of products, uh, conventional company they are they are able to invest uh, the premiums that they receive in in for example in assets such as bonds. But for Takafu company, um, they are not able to. Uh, they need to find other assets that is suitable um, in order uh, to be Sharia compliant. Uh, and for both conventional and Takafu company, uh, usually these are products. Uh, are available for reinsurance or retakafu for 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 the companies to manage the risk. Okay. Okay. Although the 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 list of comparison looks very very small, uh, very small, but there's actually a lot more uh, differences uh, between a conventional product and a takafu product. Um, other than the ones that is listed, um, we can see that actually, for example, uh, there is major differences between a conventional contract and, and a Takafu contract. Uh, the conventional contract is essentially between the insurer um, and the participants. But uh, for a Takafu company, um, the contract is uh, an agreement for the participants to donate into a pool and also an agreement for the Takafu company to manage the pool and receive a fee from it. So it is essentially a fundamentally a different type of contract altogether. And also for Takafu contracts, uh, of course, they will need to be um, Sharia compliant and, and uh, they, they will need to explain all the Sharia elements and also all the marketing literature, for example, the brochure or, or the online um, advertisements will all need to be um, uh, in line with uh, with Sharia uh, principles uh, and and Sharia requirements. Also, um, in terms of benefits, um, although for the example that we we look at just now, the benefits are very very similar, which is just death death benefits. However, for a Takafu company, there could be uh, additional benefits that is not available in 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 a conventional company. For example. Uh, uh, in Malaysia, there are additional benefits such as a uh, badal hajj benefit or a korban benefit, which essentially means that um, the Takavu company, um, in lieu of the person, uh, will use some of the money uh, that is supposed to be paid out on claims. They will uh, use that money in order to perform hajj on behalf of that person. So it is a very um, Islamic specific benefit. Uh, that is could be attractive to the Islamic or uh, to Islamic market, for example. Uh, in terms of distribution, uh, because the target market for the insurance and the takafu could be different, uh, the demographic could be different. Uh, therefore, the optimal distribution channel uh, could be different as well. For example, the same product under a conventional could be. Uh, could be very very popular under uh, under agency, but for Takafo, um, the 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 optimal distribution channel could be via online sales, for example. Yeah, so that that could be the, a difference in the way to distribute that product to the end user. In terms of modeling, uh, modeling cash flows or modeling the liabilities and assets, uh, it will be very very diff It will be different as well between the Takafo and the conventional. For a Takafu company, uh, because they have multiple funds uh, and also the concept of surplus and card, they will need to model this uh, into their into their into their model liability models. So it means that uh, because as actuaries, um, one of our work is to estimate the liabilities in the future. 
estimate, estimate how much claims uh, it's going to be in the future, the cash flows in the future. Therefore, in order to uh, model it correctly or to estimate it correctly, um, the actuaries in the Takafo company will need to model uh, the product, the same product or uh, the Takafo products uh, under a fund-based uh, modeling. So the, the modeling will need to include uh, multiple funds modeling and also the interaction between the funds, which is slightly more complicated than, than, than the normal conventional product. Uh, in terms of reporting as well, um, usually there in, in, in Takafo companies in Malaysia, there is Sharia requirement to provide a report, um, not just based on the whole company, but also based on funds, meaning that the financial statements would need, need to be segregated by fund. Um, there needs to be a separate uh, profit and loss by fund, for example. There needs to be a separate uh, balance sheet by fund to know exactly how much assets and liabilities each fund has. Uh, compared to a conventional company, uh, the, the, there is only one, uh, there is no multiple fund, therefore they are not required to do a multiple fund uh, reporting. Uh, differences also in the concept of tabarut that we explained earlier, that for example, in, in conventional company, uh, the, the, the contribution or the premium paid is, is, is deemed as a cost of insurance to, to the insurance fund. However, for a uh, Takafu company, it is considered as donation. Uh, in terms of risk management, uh, there is additional risk that exists in Takafu company, uh, mainly the Sharia risk. So uh, the Takafu company will um, need to monitor, uh, actively monitor whether they are compliant with Sharia risk, whether the product that they uh, sell every day or the investments uh, status of, of their investments are uh, uh, Sharia compliant. Um, is, is their marketing literature or are the agents are behaving uh, in a way that is Sharia compliant as well? So they have an additional risk requirement um, um, or risk management process in terms of Sharia compliance. Also, in a Takafo company, the, the Takafo company could uh, could be subject to a different uh, set of regulations. Uh, for example, in, in Malaysia, um, the conven conventional company is subject to a Financial and Services Act, the FSA, but the Takafu company um, is also subject to the IFSA or I uh, Islamic Financial Services Act. Uh, the content could be the same or could be different, but uh, the point is um, Takafu company could be subject to a different set of regulation. Therefore, um, it, be it will affect a different uh, different uh, behavior of the Takafu company. Uh, also, uh, as we mentioned before, um, in terms of investments, uh, a Takafu company would have restrictions in their investments in the terms of uh, they would need to invest in only Sharia compliance assets. And Sharia compliance assets are also uh, are not, um, a Sharia compliance status of an asset could be static or could be dynamic. For example, um, stocks uh, of a certain company could be uh, Sharia compliant in this quarter, but uh, could not be no longer Sharia compliant in the next quarter, depending on, on assessments of the regulatory report or, or authorities. So the Takafu company would need to actively assess and actively um, know whether their assets are Sharia compliant or not, and would need to take actions as soon as possible to, to mitigate this risk. Um, Another difference between uh, a Takafo company and conventional would be that um, uh, usually a Takafo company is not able to provide guarantees, um, especially investment guarantees, because uh, but a conventional company is able to. For example, uh, a conventional company can provide a savings product with, uh, with guarantee of 5% per annum. But a Takafo company uh, cannot provide those guarantees because um, the core uh, under, uh, as we discussed with Fazana earlier, as Fazana presented earlier, uh, that there could be no, um, uh, the, the Takafu company cannot provide any guarantee because it's against the Sharia principles. Um, so, yeah. So uh, we'll move on to role of actuaries in, in, in Takafu company. So, um, an actuary can take uh, multiple roles, not multiple, an actuary can, can be involved in uh, 
in a lot of departments in in the company an insurance company however usually or typically um, actuaries work in these areas of expertise which is uh, either pricing uh, valuation product development or risk or modeling so for uh, in the pricing department what actuary does is essentially um, the actuary is responsible to set premium rates um, as well as cost of insurance rates what this means is that they are um, they are responsible to assess the risk uh, of the product they are selling and set an amount of premium such that they will make a profit at a certain uh, percentage uh, on top of that um, they will also need to regularly uh, do a profitability analysis um, to ensure that the products that they sell are, are is is in line with the expectation of the profits um, and also if for example if a product um, is not doing well uh, or the profits is, or they are making losses uh, some, uh, the pricing department will need to do a repricing analysis to 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 set a new price to ensure that the insurance company um, will make profit uh, another department that uh, actually is usually involved is the evaluation department. Uh, evaluation department is uh, is responsible uh, mostly in terms of reporting uh, the valuation or reporting the liabilities of the con of the insurer. Uh, they are responsible to know how much of the liabilities that is exactly the company has uh, in terms of the 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 the, the insurance liability. So um, the valuation company, the valuation, the valuation department uh, is responsible to uh, to run the model or to uh, will work with the modeling department in order to uh, model the future expected future cash flows and determine how much of the liabilities that is expected to be paid in the future is worth today, and and this will be put in their reporting and and, and the balance sheet and also for um, the valuation department um, is also responsible for solvency assessment, which is to know um, whether the company um, is solvent or whether or, or whether they have enough money in order to pay the claims. Um, product develop they also actually can also work in product development, uh, which is uh, essentially a department where they develop new products and they study the market on what what product is actually. Um, can uh, is popular right now and they also develop the product literature or the contracts in terms uh and actually can also work in the risk department or the modeling department uh, which essentially means that they are responsible to assess the risk that the company has and also model the risk uh, uh, in order to quantify um, how much exactly um, the risk that, that the company is facing so um for a Takaful company, uh, the role of, of actually in these departments are, are the same. They will need to perform the same task, except for there are additional work that needs to be done. Uh, for example, in, in the pricing department, in the pricing department, um, they would need to do a fund-based modeling instead of uh, in, instead of um, instead of conventional no fund based modeling which is uh, like the conventional insurance uh, and also they will need to consider a different demographic due to the takafo market uh, for valuation um, as we as mentioned before um, they instead of the normal reporting process they would need to do additional fund based reporting and um, and they are also uh, they will also need to do other exercises such as surplus distribution uh, product Product development department uh, on top of uh, the product contracts, they will need to design the product that is suitable for the Takapu market. They will also need to uh, design uh, additional benefits that will attract the Takapu market and also to make sure all the product literature um, is, is compliant with Sharia. Um, and for the risk and modeling department, uh, they would have uh, additional work in order, it, they would. They have additional roles in order to ensure that all the Sharia risk is mitigated. On to you, Fazana. Okay, so yeah, maybe just uh just to share that you know uh, I've I've mainly worked in in the consulting um uh company 
uh, whereas Muzakir uh, previously worked in a Takafu company before, before moving to Milliman. So you've got, you know, two people giving, you know, um, you know, we're, we're available to us uh, to answer your questions if you've got um, if you want to know what it's like working in a consulting actuary company versus a Takaful company, etc. But yeah, so this slide is just, you know, just a snapshot, you know, from a consulting actuary perspective, you know, uh, there's a lot of work that, that um, you know, we do uh, to help the Takaful industry. Uh, it could be regulatory type work, like appointed actuary work. And what an appointed actuary is, is really someone who really uh, determines and signs off on the live Abilities, you know, how much the company needs to set aside to be to to uh, make sure that the company can pay claims uh, in the future. Uh, they sign off on the surplus distribution, and they also ensure the company is solvent. Essentially, um, you know, a consulting actually can also help in terms of product development and pricing. Yes, there's also a department inside in a Takaful company, but sometimes they require external support for maybe more complex products. Uh, products that they've not not priced before, for example, um, there's areas on on risk management. You know how can can you know, you know essentially um, risk can be better managed. Um, there's also strategy work such as you know doing mergers and acquisitions. So you know acquiring uh, you know one takaful company acquiring another takaful company or a, a conventional company looking to enter another market or another country. Uh, you know there's also support with regulators as well help. You know how help regulators set up um, and and develop takaful regulations uh, and other areas such as financial modeling. So in terms of uh, yeah, for for actually, it's a big part of our work is 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 modeling, which is you know projections in a combination of of Excel spreadsheet and maybe some uh, specialist spreadsheets uh, for to do valuation, um, to do uh, you know business planning, and also distribution work. You know in terms of how how could the company increase their sales? You know could they use a, a, a distribution via bank? So those are you know a, a wide range of areas um, that a consulting actually can help in the Tangkafu industry. And these are the areas that we have helped in the past as well. So moving on to the next slide, sorry, I'm conscious, I'm conscious of time. So we will try to, to wrap up in the, in the next 10 minutes. Um, looking ahead, so I just wanted to flag up uh, some of the challenges and, and opportunities in the Takafu industry. Um, there are challenges, you know, it, you know, some markets, there's very little, sometimes there's limited incentive to stimulate growth. Um, and, and, you know, an example of that, uh, I mean, some markets doesn't have a separate Takafu regulation, right? And, and Takafu companies would have to follow a conventional reg regulation, which may not actually be, be suitable or, 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 or practical. Um, the other issue that we tend to see as well is the lack of product innovation. Um, it's quite common that, you know, a Takafu company, um, so sometimes you have, you know, a, um, uh, company X, right? Company X has uh, a conventional license that sells conventional insurance and a Takaful license that sells Takaful. And, and sometimes um, the products are, are rep they are rep they're actually just replicating the existing conventional products. Um, I think a part of it, there are, there are reasons to it, but one of the driver is, is the fact of, you know, this lack of skilled human resource. And I would say this occurs in most Takaful markets. Um, there are also challenges on having robust IT processes. Uh, so a lot of the IT processes are developed for conventional insurance, not really for Takafu. I mean, if you could see the earlier charts on the various models, you could see the insurance model is a lot more simpler, right? Less boxes, fewer lines. Then when we start showing you the Takafu models, there's so many lines and so many boxes. And it just shows how complex it is that a, a Takafu operation can be because you've got so many cash flows going through different funds at different times. Uh, there are challenges on, on assets. Some, some markets are better than others. Um, you know, for example, I think Malaysia, we, we have a good range, but other markets um, having Shara compliant assets could be a challenge. And that makes it difficult for companies to develop products and attractive products, you know, if, if your returns are not very, uh, very, very attractive. Um, and then you've got this competition with conventional, and especially if you're a small Takaful company, I think the challenge is, is trying to grow big enough uh, to gain scale. So that, that's really the typical challenge that we see in, in many markets. Um, uh, but in terms of opportunities, I mean, the, the fact remains, you know, it is a fast growing industry. 
you know, it, for most markets, you know, um, the penetration rate is, is still very low, which indicate opportunity for, for future growth. Uh, you know, we have, you know, multinationals still very keen to obtain a Takafu license in some markets. Um, there's really opportunity really for, for more product innovation and, and, and distribution. Um, and as well, some markets, for example, Malaysia and, and Indonesia, um, there's definitely micro takaful opportunities. You know, this is low, um, this is sort of protection for, I guess, the, the low income segment. Um, and and it, 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 it really would help with, with financial inclusion because uh, usually companies would just really focus on the top, top tier, but then there's this vast opportunities um, on the, on, the, on the lower income bracket. And I think the other one that's in bold there really in, in, in blue is really about the demand of skilled actuaries, um, especially actuaries who understand Takafo. That demand um, exists in, in, in all markets and, and maybe so in, in some markets. Well, if, if, if I go on to the next slide on career opportunities. Um, so yeah, career opportunities, um, you know, there's maybe start off first with industry, you know, there's a choice of, do you prefer family takaful or general takaful? Um, then someone will question, what about health? So health really sometimes is parked under family, sometimes under general, it really depends on, on markets. Um, then there's a type of companies uh, actuaries could work for. It could be with a, uh, a takaful operator. Um, it could be with a re op operator. Uh, it could be with consultancies like, like Milliman's or audit firms or, or, or even regulators. And if you're, you know, in a takaful operator or, or re takaful operator, the, you know, there are a lot of roles that actuaries can play. So I think Muzakir already listed the common ones, right? The the actuarial, the valuation, the risk management, um, even analytics team. That's sort of a, a new thing now. Um, analytics teams, and you know, assessing, you know, data and trends. But I think the two I wanted to highlight, even finance um, and even CEO level. So it's it's quite common for you know, very senior actuaries who then step up to become chief finance officer or even chief executive officer. So we had a number, we have a number of CEOs in Malaysia who are actuaries. Um, so, so yeah, the, the, so the, the opportunities are, are, are vast really. Um, so maybe to talk about bigger pictures, you know, Malaysia has got 15 Takaful companies. Indonesia has 50 Sharia windows, mm -hmm. and, you know, just over 10 standalone uh, Sharia company. Um, and to flag up, you know, there's some markets where regulations are likely to create job opportunities for actuaries. So, for example, in Indonesia, there's a reg regulation that Sharia windows have to spin off. So, meaning that they will have to set up a new standalone uh, Sharia company or Takaful company. So, a new company will need, you know, its own actuaries, its own risk team, its own, uh, you know, um, product team, pricing team. So that, that's, that's all, you know, fantastic opportunity, I think, um, for, for people who are interested in, in the Takaful industry. So moving on to the next slide, I'll just go through a couple of case studies. I'll try to do this really quickly because I, I know there's some questions that's been sent and we want to, to be able to go through those. Um, so case study, firstly, I wanted to highlight about Malaysia. So we mentioned Malaysia has the largest uh, takaful industry in family takaful industry in the world. Um, I think there's several drivers really to to enable us to reach that. Um, and first, I think is really we have the government support. You know, the government was very focused on growing Islamic finance. Islamic banks were growing, and when Islamic bank grows, you know, um, insure sorry takaful companies also able to grow alongside. Um, uh, banking growth. Uh, and in addition, there's also, you know, good, you know, Islamic assets such as Sukuk for Takaful companies uh, to invest in and, 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 and use that to, to price products appropriately or attractively. Uh, next one in green here is robust regulation. So Malaysia has um, uh, a separate regulations for, for Takaful uh, from the inception since 1980. So I think that has helped to grow the industry. Public awareness and education, that's very, very important. Um, I, I can share with you 20 years ago, I, I may be speaking to, to um, you know, uh, some Muslims who believe um, takaful is, is not halal, you know, it's not, there's no such thing as a halal concept of, of, of insurance. 
Um, whereas now we come to, to a stage where um, Muslims are even willing to pay a bit more for, for Sharia products or Takaful products. Uh, the next one is developing of human, human capital or, or skilled resources. I think there's a lot of efforts made um, to, to focus growth on, on talent. Uh, and I think last item is to share that the regulator has been fantastic in terms of the, their approach is, is slightly different, I think, to many markets. So Bank Negara um, has been selective and, and gradual in their process of issuing Takaful license. So that enabled the industry to, to grow um, gradually rather than having so many players in the market and, and, and the competition then is, is, is too severe. So I think that's sort of a num number of key factors that has helped to grow the, the Takafu market in Malaysia. So next slide. Um, so next slide is just really to highlight, really just to be aware, you know, you have a number of stakeholders in, in the industry. You've got your shareholders, the, the ones that's, um, you know, who, who, who are the Takafu, I guess, who are providing capital really to, to, to manage the business. You've got the management, you've got the participants, uh, you've got the regulator. And to, just to be aware, there's a lot of conflicting expectations, uh, which creates some challenges in, in managing a Takaful company. So from a shareholder's perspective, they want to make profit quickly. That could be one angle. But from a management perspective, um, maybe they just want to focus on sales um, and they might not really focus on, on profits, which in that situation, then if you've got poor quality of business, then really you, you might have lower profits or, or make losses. From a participant's point of view, um, maybe there's an expectation that, oh, Takafu should be cheaper than conventional. Why, why should I pay the same or, or, or more? Um, and the regulator's point of view is, you know, it could be that, um, you know, I see Takafu and conventional insurance the same they should be the same regulations. But the reality is conventional insurance have been around for, you know, more than a decade, more than a hundred years. Um, there's companies in Malaysia that's more than a hundred years old, whereas Takafu has only been around for 20, 30 years. So, you know, Takafu is only learning how to crawl. And, you know, at the same time, when you're just learning to crawl, you're, you're, you've got the same set of regulations to someone who's already been running. So there, there's some, some, some challenges there. Um, there's pros and cons, but just something to be aware of, of that. Uh, last case study. Um, uh, yeah, so I wanted to highlight this, this point. This is a, a numerical example. It's very, very simple, I promise you. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier about uh, sometimes Takafu is more expensive and, and and the, the reason is really because of this surplus sharing element that actually impacts profitability. So in this slide, I'm just showing an example on apples, okay? So, you know, just see the cost of an, of an apple is $8 and then you're selling that apple for $10. So under a conventional concept means you've got a profit of $2, right? So the owner makes a 20% margin. But under a Takaful concept, if your profit is $2, you need to share that profit, yeah? So assuming say 50-50, so the owner actually gets only $1. So your margin, you can see, is already halved. Um, and if, if uh, the owner wants to achieve the same absolute amount of profit, which is a $2 profit, then in practice, it needs to sell that apple for $12. So that's, that's really the, the concept here. And, and why I'm raising this is because sometimes companies, if they have two entities in a country, uh, a conventional and a takafu. Um, sometimes they apply the same minimum profit requirement to both, both, uh, both entities, uh, and that's where the challenge challenge comes. Okay, next slide. I think we are almost at the end. So this is just something to share with you. Some reading materials. I think Milliman has done done quite a lot of uh, reports. So I think we will just share this the slide with you after the call, so you could look through that. Uh, and I think really that's it. And we can go straight to the Q&A, the last slide. Okay, so Q&A. Uh, I'll have a step at this first, Mozaki, but feel free to, 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 to jump in, right? So firstly, number one, what did I do? I, I started work at a consulting uh, company. In fact, I worked at Milliman London after I finished my studies. Mozaki, do you wanna add yours? Yeah, so um, I've worked with uh, a local Takafu company. 
So after finishing my studies, um, I thought that the best thing would do, I wanted to work in Takapong company because it's such a huge market uh, and there's a lot of potential. So I've intentionally uh, applied for Takapong company and, and got, got a job as an actuary uh, in the pricing department. Yeah. Okay, so second question is, uh, does Takafu contribute towards smart planning, financial planning, uh, especially for beginners? And uh, I mean, the short answer is, is yes. I mean, you know, Takafu as well as conventional insurance. Yeah, they, they are all part, uh, important tools of financial planning. Okay, so yes, third question. Yeah, sorry, go on, Muzakir. No, I just say, I, I'm a, I agree with that. Yeah. Great. Uh, okay, uh, does actual work for Takafu differ very much? Um, yes and no. Um, so in terms of, you know, yes, we still have to do the valuation, um, but it's really, you know, the devil's really in the details. So as I mentioned, it's a lot, it's a lot more complex in Takaful, in my personal view. There's a lot more funds, a lot more cash flows between funds that, that you have to be aware of. And because of that com um, complex structure, then, you know, that gives, you know, different risks um, from that, that model structure. Um, so so it's, it's, it's a yes and no, but Muzaki, I'm keen to get your thoughts as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, as we covered in, in, in one of the slides before, um, the actual work for a Takapo company, uh, they need to do all the works that insurance company does, but they have additional responsibilities and and um, and constraints. For example, Sharia constraints and and the, like like Bazana mentioned, the fund base. So uh, different funds. So meaning that they need to consider uh, fund base modeling uh, and and fund base reporting, for example. So there's additional work to be done in in, in a Takafu company as well. Yeah, and, and so I guess products can be different in conventional insurance than, than Takafu, so that there's some variation there. Okay, so what are the competencies and skills that we need to excel and prepare in our second year university? Okay, this is quite a specific question because uh, I think each university would have different expectations, I suspect, and different requirements. So maybe what I, I, I'll answer is, is, is something more longer term um, for the benefit of everyone. Um, I think competencies and skills, uh, I think that will be useful. Uh, I mean, honestly, um, Excel skills, if you could, you know, I think develop Excel. I mean, all actuaries use Excel, <laughs> Microsoft Excel. Um, so that, that's some, a skill that, you know, a lot of people get more advanced when they, you know, do it daily. Um, but yeah, if that's sort of a course that you could go, then I think that's very useful. That's sort of more on the technical side. Um, there's also, I guess, coding, you know, getting familiar with the ability to code. Um, and also, I think, really soft skills. I think soft skills, um, speaking, commun I think the key one is communicating. Communicating could be uh, in writing uh, or, or, or verbally. So those are, are really important skills um, when you come up to the workforce. Um, Musaki, anything that you'd like to add? Yes, um, I agree definitely with uh, those skills. Um especially on the coding and in Excel. Um, I do a lot of lot, lot of Excel work um, and uh, it is very, very important for, for um, actual candidates to be, to be very, very fluent in that. And also um, where does the communication part comes in is that, for example, when I was working in, in the Takapo company, uh, you need to uh, manage expectations and communication with a lot of stakeholders. I work in pricing, so that is, uh, you need to have a lot of discussion with operations, uh, product development, uh, distribution, um, and, and a lot of questions from, from the upper management. So communication, how you communicate the information from an actuary, uh, from a, techni a technical information to a layman term, for example, is very, very important to make sure that um, um, everything goes smoothly. Yeah. And, and yeah, from a consulting actuary's perspective, um, sometimes we have to present our analysis uh, to non-actuaries, um, you know, to people who, who you know, who, who might be um, uh, from a finance background, but, but non-actuary. Um, so, you know, being able to communicate that effectively in a manner that people can understand is, is a very important skill to have. So it's, it's not a matter of just doing complex work and that's it. It's, it's complex work and 
translating that into English uh, for, for others to understand. Because when you present it, maybe, for example, board level, um, people at the board level are, are, are not actuaries. They might be lawyers, for example. Um, so, so, yeah. So moving on, next question. How are math models used in calculating Takafu payments and valuation of Takafu policies? Um, so uh, it's really using the formulas that you learn in your university, really, in terms of, you know, projecting cash flows, um, allowing for probability of, of paying out claims and then discounting that effectively, you know, all that can be done in Excel. In fact, that is the, 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 the first step that most companies do. They do that in Excel. And then because, but the problem is Excel is not very efficient once you have to, to do it for a lot of policies. Or, um, so that's when after you, it's, it's done in Excel, it's checked, it's then moved on to a specialist system. Uh, it could be profit, you know, there, there, there are many out there. Um, and, and that will, is just um, to enable a, a, a more efficient valuation or calculation. Muzakir, anything to add? Yeah, so um, essentially um, it's those uh, uh, concepts that you learn in university. Uh, and for example, um, for reserving uh, in Malaysia, uh, there could be specified regulations that tells you this is the way to calculate it, or this is the number to, to be used. So that th that's those things as well. Yeah. So second last question is why does actual department exist if in the future the actual profession will be replaced by robots, etc. Um, I, I personally hope uh, it will not be replaced, uh, but I understand where the question is coming from, that there's advancements in, in IT and technology. Uh, but I think the, it's important to remember as actuaries, uh, we are not just calculators. And, and, you know, and in a lot of cases, not everything is, is black and white or, or, or completely binary. Um, where actuaries, I believe, add value is our ability to look at things in a more holistic manner. So looking at a wider picture, uh, understanding you know, the, the big picture, the risk, understanding concerns from various stakeholders, um, and then understanding what analysis is required um, and then communicating that. And I think that's only a certain extent that, um, I, I mean, just to be clear, we do use things like machine learning and AI. I think there are, those are tools that are used to support our analysis, but ultimately it's still a stage. I think that, you know, humans or, or actuaries have that, I think, more um, ability to think more widely and, 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 and identify what analysis that needs to be done. Is that clear to add? Yeah, uh, so in my point of view, um, although the AI uh, uh, progress in the world is, is very, very advanced right now, but in the near future, actuaries will still be relevant because uh, in the insurance uh, industry or the Takafu industry, uh, requires a lot, a lot of judgment and there's a lot of innovation and, mm -hmm. and, and it, it requires um, actuaries that have um, actuarial skills uh, and mm -hmm. judgment in order to, to perform effectively. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, an example would be, you know, actuaries would have to assess, um, is the surplus distribution fair? And that's something that, you know, we, we have to do the analysis and, and give justification why that is fair. I mean, fair is a very grey term, right? It's not an absolute term. Um, so that's sort of one area where judgment is required. So last item, I think, uh, I think we've already shared some, some sources um, for future reference. Okay, and I think there was one last question I, that we see that was on the chat box. Um, I think that was the question, why, oh, is, the question was, is, do you, is there, why is there no surrender value? In conventional insurance. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that? Yeah. yeah, so um, actually there is surrender value uh, for conventional insurance, uh, but uh, for term assurance, it typically that does not have because term assurance, the, the, the intention of the product is to be cheap coverage and, and to provide a cheap coverage to consumers. And uh, so the, if you provide surrender values, that it, it creates more risk and more complexity 
uh, which uh, which which goes against that concept of of making a product cheaper and easier to sell. So that that's essentially the big idea on why term assurance, conventional insurance does not have a strong value. Yeah, so it, it varies by products to product. There are products um, that has surrender value for conventional insurance. Okay. Great. Um, over to you, Karen. Okay. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Fazana and Muzakir, for, for this wonderful uh, session. I do hope that all the students who have joined today have um, learned something useful about Takafu and hopefully it will um, inspire you to uh, perhaps consider Takafu as a potential future career path. So um, a virtual round of applause to Fazana and Muzakir and thank you so much for your time. Uh, before we end the session today, uh, we really appreciate if you could just um, share your feedback with us. Uh, you know, it will help us uh, gather some of the uh, understanding about, um, you know, wh where your thoughts are on today's session. So to, this is the QR code you can see on screen. Um, so if you can just take a snapshot with your uh, mobile phone. Um, otherwise, if you can't, we will still send a feedback uh, form after today's session. Um, and also, we'll also share uh, you know, a copy of the presentation as well. And if you have any other questions, again, please drop us a line. Uh, we would be more than happy to hear from you. Um, and thank you. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, stay safe, everyone, and take care. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.